Hello and welcome back. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're watching The Arthritis Show. Joining us exclusively on the studios today is Dr. Alexis Edwards. Thank you, Dr. Alexis. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Now, you practice acupuncture here in South Florida, and I'm sure as part of your uh, practice, you see a lot of arthritis, right? I do, I do. I see all types of arthritis. Um, what portion of your practice do you say is arthritis? Probably about 35, 40 percent. Yeah, that's, that's a huge uh, part it of it. It is, yeah. What's one of the most common uh, joint problems that you get to see? Probably knee and hands. I see hands a lot, um, but knee pain is fairly... What do you really see in the hands, like carpal tunnel? Or I arthritis? see carpal tunnel and what's suspected to be carpal tunnel, and acupuncture and herbs are very effective for that, especially topically. Um, and I understand you had a really interesting case of knee lately, right? Yes, I have. It's a patient that I've been treating for quite some time, and she had um, an injury. She fell on her kneecap and shattered it and had three surgeries on the kneecap and has subsequently developed arthritis in that from, from the injury. That's one of the common things. When you get the injury in your joint, especially the knee joint, osteoarthritis is a sequel that usually it could take up to, it could take six months, it could take 20 years, but uh, these cells certainly have a memory of elephant and they're very, uh, they, they don't forget. And exactly. Uh, usually arthritis do happen. So this lady, I, I apologize for cutting in, but no. I wanted to explain that to the audience out there. So you, you get people that, you got a person, older lady, right? She actually, she's um, in her 50s, so not that older, just had an accident. And so the knee, there was an injury, and any kind of traumatic injury. In Chinese medicine, when you're having an operation or anything where you're opening up, there's cold that's going to invade. Operating rooms are cold. So that is part of, for us, what we see kind of accelerated her process of the arthritis and the pain that she experiences. So, and she has had pain for a long time. They pretty much discharged her from care because there really wasn't much that you can do for the knee at the point that she was at. And she didn't want to be taking medications, and so she just lived with it day to day and with the herbs and with the acupuncture. And we actually do contralateral needling because she has so much scarring and she doesn't have a kneecap anymore. We, do, we needle the opposite knee and have the same effect on the knee that's affected. Oh, really? So mm -hmm. you treat the opposite knee and the, the let's yes. say you treat the right knee and the left knee gets better? Yes. What's the reasoning? Is there any thought reasoning on it? Well, the main idea is that the body sort of knows what it needs to be doing and I was explained once that acupuncture really is just computer programming you put in the little codes and the body knows what to do so in that sense you don't need sometimes when you have a joint or some any pain that you have if you're putting needles into or manipulating that particular area you're going to be upsetting it and causing more pain and more trauma sometimes if you do the opposite you have the same effect, which is just one of those amazing body That's stories. Yes. That, that really is. I want to go to uh, my co-host, uh, Mr. Roman Garcia. Roman, you're dealing with a patient who's already replaced the knee, all right, okay. and uh, having tremendous amount of pain. What do you expect to find on the physical exam? I'm asking you this because we see this quite often. Uh, we see people who have replaced one knee and they're trying to have a problem and then they're trying to prevent replacement of another knee. Mm -hmm. Dr. The, the inherent problem of uh, anybody that has a prosthetic device placed in one leg is that what most the public doesn't understand about these prosthetic devices is that they do not come in all shapes and sizes. They're, they're literally come in three sizes. There is a small, large, and, um, and a medium. The doctor tries to approximate the best size for his, his or her patient. Unfortunately, in most cases, these prosthetic devices do not conform to the native tissue, the shape, the geometry. So when a prosthetic device is put inside an individual, more, more likely than not, in most cases, the individual ends up with one leg longer than the other. You see this a lot, especially in hips, but you see it a lot also in knee joints. Now, once you do that, then you start creating an imbalance in the system. And I think to, referring to Dr. Edwards, you may get a disruption of the energy flow because of this abnormality in the leg length. The well. meridian points. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, it's, anytime you're going into the body and changing something, it's 
you know, the meridians and the points are affected in the, just the flow. Yeah. For audience out there, can you explain what is the meridian points and the chi? Sure. It's the, uh, oriental medicine is founded on the idea that we have, similar to blood vessels and nerves, it's just how our er energy pathways are. And that's when people say meridians, what they mean is the pathway in which the energy that we have flows. And there's tw 12 main pathways, and each one is, corresponds to an organ. And through tongue and pulse diagnosis, that's how we do our diagnosis. And also palpation and just looking at the different symptoms that a person has, that's how you would diagnose and it's always based on those 12 meridians. Perfect. Well, again, I wanted to thank you for coming today. We would love to have you back on our program thank again. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, at this point, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Dr. Martin Dayton will be joining us. Martin Dayton is a guru in the field of integrative medicine, alternative medicine. Let's go ahead and take a break.